Welcome to episode three of our LS E30 swap guide. In this episode, we're gonna be covering how to mount the engine and drivetrain into the car, as well as setting up your fuel and cooling system. The nice thing about this swap is that there's actually very little modification that needs to be done to fit the engine and transmission inside the car. All you need to do is really just a bit of massaging with a hammer. Firstly, you'll need to push back the firewall just a little bit to make a little bit more room for the bell housing. And then the rest of the hammering is just in the transmission tunnel to make it just a little bit wider for that T56. Now, another helpful tip is if there's any little tabs on that transmission that are giving you trouble, you can always just cut those off with a sawzall. Easy peasy. For mounting the engine and transmission in the car, Siki offers a whole mounting kit that makes the swap really, really easy. CX Racing also offers a kit, but I can't confirm or deny the quality of that one because I can't find any reviews on it, which is kind of weird. Also, you could just save some money and make those mounts yourself. That's what I did on my car. I made my own engine arms and then used Garagistic's Poly M20 engine mounts to bolt it to the subframe. For my cross member, I just modified the E30 transmission cross member and put some studs through the floor and welded in reinforcement plates. All right, let's talk about oil pans. Now, Siki offers an oil pan for this exact swap, but it is a little bit pricey. And I discovered that you can use the Canton Racing front sump oil pan or the Moroso front sump oil pan, and those are a little bit cheaper. And you can mount the oil filter in the stock location, contrary to what Siki suggests on their website. Now, once you've got that engine and transmission bolted into the car, next is throwing in that drive shaft. And with this drive shaft is going to be an adapter plate that bolts to the flange of the diff and adapts to those larger U-joints on that LS drive shaft. Now, this flange is gonna be contacting the top of the subframe because it is quite a large disc. So you're gonna to need to space the diff down just a little bit so you have enough clearance for that disc to spin. So the best way to do this, just grab a handful of washers, test fit a couple times how much you need to space the diff down just so that that flange is not contacting the subframe at all. For your cooling system, most people just reuse the factory E30 Rad. On my car, I got the E30 Mishimoto aluminum radiator because it cools a little bit more efficiently and I think it looks great too. Now for your cooling fans, you're gonna to need to get some electric ones that mount on the front side of the radiator and you could either get one big ass fan or two smaller ones whatever you want. Next is figuring out your rad hoses. And this is really gonna depend on your specific inlet outlet configuration with all the different water pumps that LSs have. So your best bet is just to go to Napa's website, filter by your inlet size diameter, and then just scroll through the page and try to find ones that look like they'll work for your setup. Also keep in mind that you can always cut the rad hoses and put them back together in different angles using some couplers. For your fuel system, the Walboro 255 is the go-to fuel pump for pretty much every LS swap under 500 horsepower. If you are planning to make a whole lot more power, then you're best just to go online and calculate which one you need. Now, regardless of what fuel pump you choose, you're gonna need the LS fuel filter regulator in one, and that guy can bolt underneath the car in the same spot that your E30 fuel filter used to be. And you're just gonna need a couple EFI fittings to hook that guy up to your existing fuel lines. Now, the E30 stock fuel lines do have enough flow to support the LS power, although while you're in there, you might just be better to swap them to the 3 8 lines anyways. All right, now that we got the LS mounted into the car and most of the big problems out of the way, I will see you in the next episode where we cover all those final details.